Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this edition of Creative Cow's Video Adrenaline Series for Premiere Pro. Today, we're going to be talking about encoding and the flexibility of using a feature that saw improvement in Adobe Media Encoder CS5.5. That's watch folders. And watch folders are great because they let you take settings for a client or a job and make them drag and drop. You might have seen these in other applications referred to as droplets or templates, but this works a little bit better, and I'm here to show you how. Let's take a look. So I've launched Adobe Media Encoder, and what I'm going to do is twirl down the watch folder option here. If I go ahead and click plus, I can make a new folder and target a location, such as my desktop. We'll click new folder, and I'll give this a name. And let's call this iPad. There we go. I'll choose it. And now it asks me to specify a compression setting that I want to use. Pretty easy. We'll choose a file format. In this case, since it is iPad, we're going to go with H.264. Let's click the preset pop-up here, and you'll see that we have lots of choices. In CS5.5, they added several more compression presets to jumpstart you. In this case, even presets for Apple's iPad. Let's go ahead and specify that this is a 16 by 9 content. And we're going to go with the large size of 640 by 360 at a higher data rate. That looks good. I'll click to apply that. And it's going to go ahead and want to know a destination. Now, I recommend that you have a separate folder for your processing. So let's just make a new folder here. We'll click on that Output to, and it'll open up the File Navigation Services. We'll make a new folder called Output. And within there, I can make additional folders for each file format. So in this case, I'm actually going to make a subfolder called iPad. There we go. We'll choose that. We've got our folder. It's got a setting attached. And notice that we have the option here called Auto Encode Watch Folders. So this is going to work pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and hide this for a second. And we'll come out to the desktop here. And what I'm going to do is drop a movie into that watch folder. Here we go. I'll just copy it in this case. You could, of course, just drag and drop if you were moving it. And it's going to copy in. And this is a pretty large file. And we'll switch back here to Adobe Media Encoder. And it's just going to keep an eye on that folder. And at some point, notice it detected. There he went. It found the movie, it added it to the queue, and it automatically started to encode. So this is pretty cool. You could go ahead and just have drag and drop folders set up for a client. I recommend that you go through and actually set up the presets so you could drag a movie in and it will automatically detect and go pretty fast. This is a nice way to quickly spit out a whole bunch of files for a client without having to worry, did I pick the right preset? Go through, do that first compression, Lock it down, send it off to the client. Does it look good? Does it play? Does it work for you? And then, once they approve that setting, just keep using that same drop folder. Drag in every video that you need to give them, and it'll go ahead and process it out and spit out the correct files. Chimes when it's done. Let's go ahead and check that. Here we go. Let's check our output folder. There it is. It went down to a correctly formatted MPEG-4. And we dropped that file down to 5 megabytes from 320. Let's take a look at how that looks full screen. That's nice and clean. Keeping in mind, too, that we actually blew that up significantly. The iPad screen is a native 1024. It likes video that's 640. This file would be perfectly well suited for an iPad. I played it back in high definition on my laptop. It still looked good. So that was obviously a huge file savings, very efficient compression. And one of the things I love about a media encoder is that it's fast. This is just run on a laptop. But Adobe Media Encoder is a 64-bit app that's multiprocessor aware. So the more cores and the more RAM you have, the quicker it's going to chew through your video and give you some really good results. For Creative Cow, my name is Rich Harrington. I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net. 
click on the podcast tab and you'll find tons more video tutorials there that you can check out. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe to the Creative Kyle Magazine, where you can get great industry stories by working pros as they share their workflows and experiences getting the job done. My name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining us.